welcome back. We are so glad you found your way here to the nonprofit show. The, we were just talking about what we did for the weekend. So we hope everyone had a lovely weekend. You're coming back, you're rested, you're recharged. I know I am, but I'm also drinking extra coffee this morning. Today's guest, we are thrilled to have you back. It's one of our favorites, Mr. Jerry Diaz, who is a CFRE, also founder and CEO of Geronimo Consulting. And Jerry's bringing to us today a topic that I am so eager to hear from you about it's our nonprofit consultants really worth it. So stay with us. Jerry's got some really good insights to share. But before we jump into conversation, we want to remind you who we are if we haven't had the pleasure of meeting you quite yet. So hello to you, Julia Patrick. Julia serves as the CEO of the American Nonprofit Academy. And I'm Jarrett Ransom, your nonprofit nerd and CEO of the Raven Group. Truly honored, Julia, to serve alongside day in and day out for the nonprofit show. You know, we are coming up soon on wrapping up this year. I cannot believe it. We've had amazing guests, which also include these amazing presenting sponsors. So shout out of so much gratitude because they're still in the gratitude train. <laughs> delivering American Nonprofit Academy, Fundraising Academy at National University, Nonprofit Thought Leader, Your Part-Time Controller, Staffing Boutique, Nonprofit Nerd, as well as Nonprofit Tech Talk. These companies have been with us many from the very beginning and have helped us to produce so many amazing conversations, which you can find on all of our archive channels. Go ahead and pull out that smartphone. We know you're either on it or it's sitting right next to you. You can scan that app and download it so that you get a notification, as well as find us on streaming podcasts and broadcast stations. And later today, this conversation we're having right now, live unscripted, unfiltered, right? With Mr. Jerry Diaz will be up later today. So without further ado, I would love to reintroduce our guest, Mr. Jerry Diaz, CFRE, also founder and CEO of Geronimo Consulting. Welcome back, Jerry. Jared, Julia, thank you for having me. This is such a good topic, right? Uh, I have been fortunate enough to be on the show a few times. So every time we talk about something different, so this is the timing on this as we talk about the year end as you make plans for 2024, when you talk about budgets and making budget allocations, consultants could be a part of that. So the timing is, is perfect. Yeah. You know, I feel like um, consulting, you either love it or you hate it. And it seems like the way you are as a customer, I'm talking about from the nonprofit side, you need to know how to be a good customer and to work with a consultant before you can really have a great experience. And I don't think we talk about that enough. We put it all on the onus of the, the consultant. And then, you know, we try and mitigate expectations and, and performance, but advantages of a consultant starting us right off, you talk about subject matters that might be on you know, might be in front of you, but not a part of a team or that you don't have that access. What does that look like to you, Jerry? Oh my gosh, that's a good way to start. I will say just to, to level set our conversation, consultants work in all three sectors, right? So our conversation today is just gonna be about nonprofit. Um, and here's what I will tell you about consultants. Um, if there's only one or two takeaways, here's one of them. Uh, the working with consultants as an investment, not an expense, right? They bring an expertise that you may not have on your team or not able to afford somebody, right? So when you choose them, choose them wisely and talking about the scope of work, which is what you're going to be working on, the timing, the cost, you know, particularly in, when we talk about consultants in the nonprofit space, you're going to see a lot of work around fund development, uh, organizational development board engagement, program and data management. So those are kind of some of the big pieces. But when you talk about subject matter experts, consider these very cost effective, right? So instead of hiring somebody full time for a long period of time, you have somebody for a very short period of time, right? You have clear timelines and deliverables. Mm -hmm. um, and it would be more expensive to hire somebody full time. I mentioned that already yeah. And they have a bandwidth you don't have. So yeah. as a as a 
as a team, a nonprofit team, you're busy and you're busy and you're busy. And to ask you to take on another big project would seem kind of overwhelming, right? So it could be maybe your organization is looking at maybe a capital campaign, right? To expand your services. Uh, it could be that maybe your organization is at its life cycle where it needs to expand staffing. So you can bring somebody, maybe you need somebody to help you redo your roadmap, often known as strategic plan, right? So these are just some really good examples of how a nonprofit consultant can just kind of just, I almost want to say plug and play, right? Mm -hmm. They just come in with a very specific scope. They get to know the lay of the land. They do their work uh, and off they go until you need them. Jerry, I love that you said, think of them as an investment, not necessarily yeah. lost, right? Like that to me you're right. If, if, if no one takes anything away, please mm -hmm. just take that because that's a big piece. I'm curious, Jerry, are you seeing a lot of organizations like readily, I don't know, eager to take on a consultant? Because I'm curious if this has changed since the pandemic, right? If it's like, okay, yes, we're much more open to having a consultant work with us now. Are you seeing that happen more now than we did maybe three, four years ago? That's a very oh, Jared, 100%. If we had this yeah. conversation five or seven years ago, um, it was like, what are consultants? What do they do? Are they just right. here to get money from the organization? <laughs> Most consultants are for profit, as we know. Uh, but now, you know, we think about a Venn diagram. Consultants are part of that Venn diagram. You have the nonprofit, you have the funders, you have consultants as that ecosystem, right, mm -hmm. that helps the organizations run more efficiently, mm -hmm. right? I definitely have seen that. And I've also seen more people who were in nonprofit leverage all their experiences and move to the other side of the aisle. I'm a perfect example. 25 mm -hmm. years direct nonprofit experience. Started Geronimo Consulting exactly four years ago this month. So okay. instead of helping one organization, I can help many organizations. You know, but when you talk about, you know, the outside perspective with multiple experiences, this is exactly what we're talking about. Yeah. Right. And here's what they also bring. They also bring industry best practices. Right. Uh, they also bring their experience. Uh, they also bring the network of other organizations uh, and what other people have done. Right. Mm -hmm. um, and we can see the forest through the trees. Right. So <laughs> when you're in a nonprofit, you're always like in the day to day of providing these wonderful services and delivery and infrastructure. But a consultant can come in with a completely different perspective. Right. And the other thing a consultant is a consultant can say things other people can't. Right. right. So we also bring that. We sometimes uncover things. And one there is one other thing that I think is really interesting on the consultant life is sometimes we'll be brought, we'll, will be brought to the table for one scope of work and then uncover yeah. other things. Other kind things. of go, hey, you're talking fund development, but there really is like a board piece to this. So there really is yeah. a culture piece to this. And sometimes mm -hmm. you can bring other people like, hey, I don't do that work specifically, but I have a cadre of other people that I can help, you know, bring to the table. You know, consultants also have, a, we have other clients, we have a broader perspective. Uh, we bring in that independent voice. Uh, and there's one other big piece here. The consultant's number one agenda is your organization's success. Yeah, absolutely. I, I really appreciate that too. I'm curious, Jerry, your perspective. Um, I, I've heard it all and I and I can see both sides of this. So my question to you is when we're looking for a consultant, hmm. excuse me, should we look for someone that has that specific sector experience or are we looking for someone, you know, that has a more broad experience? So, for example, if we're an arts and culture organization, do we need to bring in that arts and culture expert? Are we bringing in someone that has experience broadly? I'm curious your stance on that. Oh, that's such a good question. I love this question. Yeah, I me love too. This question. Um, yeah. The short answer is it depends. <laughs> <laughs> the, the okay. longer the longer answer is it really depends on where the organization's in its life cycle. And one of the first things when I do these uh, discovery calls is when you would talk about using a consultant, how do you define success? 
right? Mm. What does success look like on the end when we're done, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and then I'll let you know whether I'm a good fit, right? Mm -hmm. So, and the other thing about consultants is we have a um, a bag of tools, right? right? We bring out all of these tools, right? What do you need? What do you need? What do you need? Um, does it help if you were the executive director of an arts and culture to work for another arts and culture? Yes, absolutely. But if you're going to be talking about poor governance, it doesn't really matter. Yeah, right. Sure. So it really depends on what that scope of work looks like. Although at the top of our conversation, I should have said, choose your consultants carefully. Make sure they're vetted. Make sure they have the experience. Make sure they have the knowledge to make sure that when you talk about the investment, then you're going to just get the full squeeze of that orange juice. Mm -hmm. You know, you say something really interesting about understanding the consultancy wor world and one of them is project in completion out can you kind of explain that concept and and how we can understand this you know more in in terms of moving forward and even what opening up our organizations to this type of interaction sure so <clears throat> most consultants will work off something called a scope of work this defines the work of that they're going to be doing that it includes a time frame compensation schedule all of that right it, it gets rid of all the ambiguity right mm -hmm. it's a contract essentially right there are clear deliverables for success uh the other thing that uh the use of consultants particularly when you're talking about projects is delivering forms practices processes they'll help educate and train they have that expertise right uh, they usually, most of them have really strong project management skills that they've done as a consultant, so they'll bring all of that. And then sometimes what I've found is there's like little, like people take notes as you talk, right? They're like, oh my God, I love that perspective. Oh, I love that website. Mm -hmm. Oh, I like this. Oh, can you send me the form? You're like, of course, right? So when you talk about that relationship, it's very special, right? And there's also like, um, um, when you bring a consultant in, it's okay to be vulnerable. It's okay to pull back the curtain. It's okay not to be perfect, right? Mm -hmm. Consultants will meet you where you're at and just say, okay, let's work on those, right? I, I have that expertise. Um, and then they can also help with other projects, right? Like, and here's a perfect example of a project in, project out. You continue to grow as an organization and your infrastructure is just not keeping up. So you can bring in a consultant to take a look at your entire infrastructure, your database, accounting, uh, maybe you've used technology for programming and say, you may have a director of operations. They go, I don't have time for that. And frankly, that's not what brought me to the table. Right. We need help. That's a perfect project in, project out. And the other thing about project in, project out is that you can also make other introductions. Mm -hmm. Like I use this one, but as a technology person uncovers something different, maybe program evaluation, you know, when they're talking about the technology, you're like, oh, you need a program person to come and right. do an evaluation, right? So that that's how I see project in uh, and completion out. Uh, Jared, any thoughts on that? Yeah, no, I'm right there with you, Jerry. Um, you know, I agree with that. Often it's a project that is uh, too high level for the current team, or it's a project that keeps being pushed and pushed and pushed aside, right? And we're like, we'll get to that, you know, next, which we all know, right? There's never the perfect, you know, time to to take that on. So you sometimes need to rip that Band-Aid. Um, I'm really curious, Jerry, and this might be more of a pointed question, but as you say, think of consultants truly as an investment, not a cost. When we're thinking of our cost for consultants and we're looking at scheduling, you know, our budget for next year, is there a certain percentage perhaps of the organization that we should allocate to these expert professionals? I know that might seem like a loaded question. I myself don't even know the answer. So I'm really curious um, what the two of you see for that. Sure. Um, sure you came with all the good questions. <laughs> You're this like, is what a week off does for me. Yeah, it's like that <laughs> extra coffee. Um, here's how I will answer that. Um, when you look at nonprofits from that very top level, you talk about vision, right? Then the mission, 
right? And underneath mission, it's that strategic plan. Mm -hmm. And then from there, you come up with the yearly goals for fund development, program, staffing, all of those. But when you're talking about consultants, go back to that strategic plan, you know, that roadmap, right? If you, if the, if the roadmap says in two years, you're going to double programming, if you're going to increase staff, if you're going to look at technology, you're going to relook at the board and their goals, right? That's when you can kind of go, does that expertise sit either within the organization or a board of directors? And if it's not, then you can say, oh, we can identify three projects for consultants. We just now have to figure out what success looks like. Then we have to find them, figure out the cost is. And that's the other piece to this is not all consultants charge the same dollar right. or, or project. Right. right? Right. And, you know, I would probably, you know, some would even argue that you get what you pay for. Right. If you want somebody with decades of experience or has say, hey, I'm in this arts and culture space, this is my forte, this is my whole thing. You know, I know of a consultant on the East Coast that only works with Jewish schools. Mm -hmm. And that's all he does, all up and down the East Coast. He got, he has, he's known for this. They all use him. So he has that very niche piece, right? But you're going to pay for that experience because he's worked with so many. Right. So I think it all kind of depends. Okay. That was a very long answer, by the way. No, it's it's I think a good a good thing. And, and it kind of leads me to the next um, topic that I think we need to talk about. And Jarrett has a lot of experience in this as well. So I'll be interested to get, you know, uh, her point of view. But you talk about using consultants during transitions and holy moly, we are seeing a period of, of transition in the nonprofit sector because we have a change of leadership due to demographics aging out. Uh, we have a different type of workforce that wants to be engaged a different way. We have a lot of things going on. Plus, we've just come out of a major global health pandemic. So there's there's an argument here for transition. I, I kind of believe that pretty much every nonprofit in America, or let me say North America, can say, yeah, we're in a period of transition. I mean, it's to, to some degree or another, how do consultants or can consultants fit into this this jigsaw puzzle? This is also one of those things that we've seen evolve over the last four or five years, right? Mm -hmm. We see silver tsunami, we see um, the private sector poaching nonprofit executives, uh, yeah. we see some coming into consulting, uh, we see development people being moved up into that senior leadership position, um, so there becomes this vacuum within the organization. Uh, you can even say it's on programming, anything in that director or officer level, right? But they can support that. And the, their, uh, Jared and I both are trained and due to interim uh, placement right. at multiple levels, right? So there is a very strong value proposition that I've type perspective. We can be agents of change. We can do evaluations. Um, and sometimes even talking about the expansion of services, right? It, does the organization, is it, are they intentional and they're gonna avoid mission creep, but be they wanna change part of their mission, they're gonna do it strategically, right? Are there board transitions that, that uh, consultant can help with on uh, expansion of space or geography? Um, I worked with a food bank once where they were like, there's a real need outside of our, what we said we're going to, and we want to work with other people. We want to do mm -hmm. kind of a environmental scan to see if we can expand our services. So some of this stuff, when we talk about transition, isn't necessarily always bad, right? And change right. is inevitable, but being able to have consultants there to say, either through things that beyond our control or through intentionality, mm -hmm. how can consultants help us with that transition? Yeah, and Julia, to that, I'll add, you know, we're seeing a lot of transition, as you mentioned. Mm -hmm. um, I love, Jerry, you're like, it's not always for bad, it's for good. You know, what I'm really seeing, too, is this influx of cash many of our organizations received during the pandemic, and now kind of going back to uh, more of a budget that they're familiar with, right? So one of the organizations I had the privilege of working with went from 
you know, a 7 million to a 17 million over the last four years. And now they're kind of getting back to that 7 million. Well, what do you do? That's a huge transition. You know, it's like, if you think of it as a balloon, right? Like the balloon was a normal size and then it really expanded almost to where it's going to pop, but then it came back down to the attrition size. So there's a lot of transitions happening. What I'm also really keen to see, and I'm curious, Jerry, what you're seeing in this space as well, Funders are funding transitions. They're funding transitional projects. They're funding transitional programs and transitional leaders. Mm -hmm. It's not taboo. I'm not seeing it as taboo. I'm really seeing funders jumping on this because this is truly part of the organizational change. So 100% agree with you. And I think the other thing we're seeing with funders is they're, they're evolving. Funders were always like, oh, give us a program and we'll fund the program. Yeah. Now they're looking at, I know a funding group that talks about mergers and acquisitions. Yeah. I know another funder that yeah. supports consultants. Say the organization comes to us says they need an assessment of whatever, whatever. Mm-hmm. Uh, and the funder will say, we will support that work, that the money will go to the consultant. So that traditional model of how funders support nonprofits is evolving. This also kind of ties in that whole piece about like, what percentage of money needs to be raised for overhead versus fundraising, right? You know, it's like that whole, you know, you have to starve yourself as an organization and pay less people money, right? So it, it's this is a whole other conversation about mm-hmm. you have to you have to support organizations with good talent to get the best mission possible, right? Mm-hmm. So it's a whole other kind of conversation. But I do think that consultants can play a role in this. You know, some consultants should doing white papers, some consultants are um, connecting organizations. I knew one consultant uh, locally that worked with a whole bunch of um, organizations. And she started a CEO club. Mm-hmm. And she just said, hey, I think there's a need for collaboration. Uh, so I'm gonna connect all the dots for you. And that, are, and that club has now spawned other CEO clubs. Yeah. You know, Jerry, I love the holistic approach with this, but I kind of want to drill down a little bit into project management, because I think a lot of times we think, oh, that's got to be internal and we have to find somebody that knows, you know, us inside and out in order to have some sort of project management navigated. But you're telling us to take a look at consultants. How does this work? Sure. So a consultant can come in to help with a project or projects, mm-hmm. right? It could be maybe you're going to start a brand new gala and you need outside help, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, maybe you need a scope of work to help identify needs in the community, right? Mm-hmm. Nonprofits have to be nimble to look at yeah. needs, kind of go, we would love for you to do a market analysis to tell us whether or not our organization is still relevant and based on what mm-hmm. we're doing, right? Right. Uh, we talked about a project with infrastructure as an example. Um, the other thing about project management for consultants is they can help with training, right? They, they can help other people, bring other people along, right? Mm-hmm. I don't want to go as far as say you become a full mentor, but you certainly have, you have that expertise. The other thing about project management and consultants is they will help identify successes, challenges, and opportunities. Uh, in that order. I always start with successes. Um, and as I mentioned earlier, they have tons of experience and lots of tools in the toolkit, right? They can also help with vendors, connecting other resources, right? Um, I've done that. Um, and I just think, you know, they are the all around Swiss army kind of tool that you need, right? <laughs> I love that. I love, I can see that. Yeah, I can, I can totally see that. And I like what you said. Um, and I think sometimes we don't, um, recognize that enough, but the connectivity, um, that a consultant can bring, because to your point, you're, you've seen a lot and done a lot and you, you can bring that history with you, um, and present it without prejudice, if you will, or fear, even more importantly. I mean, Jared, doesn't it seem to you that um, in in your tenure doing this type of work that you're given permission to say no or to point out problems or to to lead maybe a group in a different way? 
100%. And I would say for those that hire me, that's exactly why they're hiring me, <laughs> right? It's like, hey, right. you know that this person will uncover some things perhaps that we're not ready to see. Mm -hmm. But one thing that, you know, I, I do know to be true is many organizations, and we've talked about this, you know, a lot, Julia, you know, there's a founder story in every organization. And so the reason why organizations exist is never really to be an expert in fundraising or an expert in program evaluation, right? Like they exist to provide that solution to the community problem. So as Jerry mentions, as the organization evolves, as does their strategy, as does, as does their plan and their leadership. And there's just so much that goes into it. Um, and you're right, Julia, like really having that truth to power is something yeah. that consultants have the the ability, right, to share. Jerry, I don't know about you, but I have certainly been hired, you know, almost as if to be um, the person to speak what yes. the CEO or the development director has been saying for months and they just, right. they, the board, the team, whomever, like they're just not grasping it. So they'll literally say, Maybe if we pay someone to say this to them, they'll actually hear it this time. Oh, for sure. And sometimes consultants are brought in either on the on the upswing of growth yeah. or on the downswing of decline. They kind of go, we're in trouble. Like, right. and we can't fix this. We need somebody who has been here, done that, understands the landscape, who can really do an assessment and make tough decisions, mm -hmm. right? To kind of go, this is, this is an outside voice that has a lot of experience and that's really tough. I do want to say, um, want to come back to anybody uh, for the viewers is that you don't necessarily have to talk about that budgeting. You should certainly budget money for consultants, but there are also funders who will help pay for them as well. Mm -hmm. So even if we're talking, like if we were having this conversation in March and the budget was already set, you can also find the resources to bring on a consultant. Mm -hmm. Exactly. I love this. Well, you, my friend, are a tremendous resource. Uh, we love having you on. Um, you're one of the very first people that we called uh, at the dawn of, you know, COVID. And when we were talking to different people and getting, you know, um, a, this conversation started, um, now moving towards our fourth year, more than 900 episodes, you were there with us from the beginning. So thank you so much. Um, Geronimo, Jerry Diaz, CFRE, founder of Geronimo Consulting. Check out GeronimoConsulting.org and you can learn more about Jerry. Um, he's super involved in um, so many of our professional development organizations and uh, he's just been a great advocate for the sector all along. And so definitely, definitely somebody I think you need to know no matter where you are in this country. Again, I'm Julia Patrick, CEO of the American Nonprofit Academy. I'll tell you another person you need to know, Jared Ransom, the nonprofit nerd. She's somebody you need to know, CEO of the Raven Group. Um, we are here again because of amazing, amazing investments from our sponsors. They include Bloomerang, American Nonprofit Academy, your part-time controller, Nonprofit Thought Leader, Fundraising Academy at National University, Staffing Boutique, Nonprofit Nerd, and nonprofit tech talk. These are the folks that join us day in and day out so that we can have these amazing conversations like we've had today with Jerry Diaz um, to kind of help us understand how this, this outside voice and tenor of that voice can really help our nonprofits. This has been fascinating, Jerry. Thank you for bringing us kind of full circle, especially as we end the year to understand what this type of talent can do for our organizations. Sure. Thank you for having me today. Yeah, you've been fantastic. Thank you so much, Jerry. Uh, the other thing I'll add, you know, is really looking at consultants. I love that you mentioned, you know, consider someone on another coast. They don't have to be right there in your local community. So there's a lot of ways to really consider this. So again, thank you for joining us, sharing this perspective on consultants and how they play a major role in our sector. As we wrap up today, we hope that you'll join us again tomorrow. And as we end every show, we like to remind you to please stay well so you can do well. Thanks, everyone. And we'll see you back tomorrow.